Here we go. What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Good morning, everybody, and it is a beautiful Sacred Sunday, uh, and it's wonderful to have each and every one of you with us. Welcome. I want to welcome all of our friends watching on Facebook. Thank you, John and Summer Raymer and the Sign Network for putting us out over 100 Facebook groups and pages. And I especially want to welcome those of you watching on Unify and also on Alan Steinfeld's YouTube channel. And I want to encourage people to come into our Zoom room because this morning is going to be a very interactive show and we've got three amazing guest presenters who are going to be sharing tips, tools, and practices for how to really access more miracles in our life, especially through the power of divine love. Um, and it's really a, an amazing group of people to wrap up what's been a really beautiful weekend. Um, and one of the great joys of my weekend has been I've had the opportunity to be co-hosting all weekend long with the lovely Eden Amadora, and there she is. Um, now, of course, you look at it and right away you see a beautiful woman, but I want to tell you, her real beauty emanates from who she is as a, as a being. She is so high vibe and brings such quality and integrity and love to everything she does, and that's what this whole weekend has been about, has been doing everything with love and i know many of you watched our show last night where we premiered our new song do everything with love so anyway welcome eden thank Happy. you scott i'm just thrilled to be back again and i have to tell you that that new bumper and Kristen's song just cracks me open so high vibe yeah thank you I, i'm I, I have to say I, i've got it in my head and i'm really excited about it too and what a wonderful weekend we've had so far amazing so beautiful. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you to lead us in kind of a, we always do a, a morning meditation uh, on Sunday morning, and then we'll meet our wonderful guests, Niyurka and Astorius Miraculi. But I'm going to turn it over to you, Eden. Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. So this, um, this beautiful day, this Sunday ruled by the sun here, let's open our hearts to the sun within. Let's go ahead and come inward together and close our eyes and just let our hands rest on our laps and bring your crown of your head back a little bit. We're so forward leaning in the Western world, just rushing ahead. Let's come into this holy now, the sacred moment and bring our heart chakras forward. And as if they're lifting like a flower turning its petals upward and opening to the inner sun and start to breathe deeper than you usually breathe, taking a few deep belly breaths. 
with a nice sigh. Let's just make the sound of ah together. Breathing in. Ah. Relaxing, releasing tension again. Deep, long ah. Ah, melting away the cares, everything it took to get here, landing in this precious body. One more long resonant ah. Ah. Beautiful. Now bringing your awareness, all your attention focused on the heart chakra. And if you bow your chin just a little bit, you can journey inward and downward deep into the sacred heart, finding all of your awareness traveling back to the back of the heart chakra, deep breath there. And just melting any tension, any armor, any crystallization, any places that we've been overwhelmed in this 3D reality, in this safe and sacred space today together. Let us unfurl the wings of our heart, breathing and visualizing and releasing the softening, this opening from the back heart. And as you let the back heart open, you can lift the chin and the front heart again and let your spine be soft as if liquid light is pouring down your shishumna your central channel, breathing and receiving the blessings of the inner sun, the inner light. The sun is the heart. There's a powerful mantra that is called the sun heart mantra. And as you imagine your own heart emanating as if this place inside of you, that place that can never be broken, never be tarnished is also glowing and radiating brighter and brighter feeling your connection to divinity. The Sun Heart Mantra basically means no fear, no hate, no pain, no illusion befalls the one who has awakened the sun. The sun is the heart, the sun is the heart. Om Aditya Hridayam Punyam Sarv Shatru Bina Shanam. The sun is the heart. And as you breathe into your sun heart, just feel your whole luminous egg just radiating this beautiful light. And there may be a particular color frequency that's radiating from the center of your being, allowing that to reveal itself. Expanding your capacity to receive the light and emanate the light through the center of the sacred heart. And then bringing all your awareness back to your central channel with this great luminosity together all over the world, let us beam down together into Mama Gaia. And imagining not a skinny little grounding cord, but a column of light as big and wide as your luminous egg, just beaming from the most high, radiating down through all your chakras, down, down through your central channel, breathing and receiving this blessing as it moves through the heart, the solar plexus, the belly, down to the sacral chakra, to the root, through your hips and thighs, past your knees, lower legs, ankles, lighting up your feet. See yourself fully illuminated and then beaming down through what you're sitting on, the floor, the building, the foundation, right into Mama Gaia, Terra, Earth. And we all beam down together. I like to think of us like luminous acupuncture needles giving Gaia an attunement for all beings, for the one heart. See this beam of light just penetrating easily down, down, down into her heart. And then feel all of our hearts connected there and feel this great support, just nourishing and flooding back up that column of light for your precious life. As you lift your hands of light into the namaste prayer at your heart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Feeling your gratitude, increasing your joy level. And I bow to you. Namaste, beloved. Namaste.
<sighs> I just stay with that for a moment. Mm, thank you. You know, after a meditation like that or last night with the twin ray, it's hard to drop into Scott the host and producer because I'm kind of like, <laughs> like okay, I'm, I've got to do things here. So thank you. Thank you. Well, I, um, I want to introduce our two beautiful guests. And then I think we're going to just start with kind of a, a little bit of a conversation. And I want to welcome everybody. Um, and we are going to be interactive uh, now that we're Zoom meeting on Sunday mornings, which is really, really cool. Um, uh, we will take some of your questions and some of your thoughts. And again, the whole topic today is how do we really truly create miracles in our life? especially by accessing divine love. And uh, this first brother I'm going to bring on, he is just like Eden and New Yorker. All of our guests are really embodiments of divine love. I love you, Brother Astarius. It's good to have you with us. Um, this man has been bringing his love and his magic to the world uh, in wonderful ways. And whenever I mention you, Astarius, like Eden, and, and you're about to see Nyurka. We go, Astarius, oh my God, he did the most amazing healing treatment for me. So you and your didgeridoo, have didgeridoo, will travel. Um, <laughs> you've really impacted a lot of people's lives. So it's wonderful to have you with us. And um, hopefully we'll uh, maybe even play that video uh, so people can get a little sense of your amazing sound healing work. He's uh, truly a master sound healer. And our other guest is Nierka. And uh, we've had her on the show, on the Saturday Night Show a couple times. She is a powerhouse. Uh, she's a transformational leader and mentor. She worked side by side with Tony Robbins for five years. And she is devoted to empowering people all over the world. And she unites the world of business with our our world, our essential world, if you will, of mind, body, and spirit. And she's got a really special gift for us tonight, or today, see, tonight, there you go, this morning. So welcome, everybody. Um, I love bringing people together, and I love that you guys all kind of get to connect with each other a little bit, because you're all three very special souls. Um, so I guess I'll just start by asking each of you, maybe round robin, maybe we'll go in the order that I introduced you, Eden, Astorius, and then Nierka. What's What in your own personal life, we'll just start with your own personal life, is an example of where you accessed higher self or divine love and it created the miracle. So let's just start with that. That's a beautiful question. I'm, um, I'm wondering, am I spotlighted? I see you. I'm yep. looking at you. It's spotlighted. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, this question is so powerful because I, I live more and more into a state of service and unconditional love and offering these experiences for other beings to tap into their own self-love and higher frequency. And I, I recognize that the miracle for me is in the choosing to step out of a life that was once much, much more egoic, much more about glamour and what I could get from the world. And the miracle for me, I spoke about it a little bit on um, the show last night, was that it took a couple kind of, well, one major, what I would call a spiritual crisis or a dark night of the soul to to kind of awaken to what I'm really doing here. And the miracle was that my life, the outer life started to change radically only once I had this shift internally. And, you know, I know we often just, we want to manifest things. We want a better relationship or a higher quality of, of life. And that is not possible until we raise our love level, our self-love level and our self-forgiveness level. So for me in this journey of awakening, there's been several opportunities to really drop the ego 
agenda and sometimes it's painful sometimes it's about disillusionment and betrayal apparently or seeming loss that then ushered me through into so much more availability for spirit and presence for others i would say some of the greatest miracles i see are in my relationships and being so much less reactive so much less drama driven and more curious and soft and open and it wasn't just like a big pop sudden change it's been a gradual embodiment and I would sometimes call it like an involution process of bringing more of my like soul here in the body so that I'm coming through what would what would this soul driven life choose what would what would love say now what would love do now not just what what do I want? How can I get my needs met? And so that's the miracle for me. It's actually seeing this change over time and how my relationships have become just more compassionate, gentler, kinder. And there's so many beings that I have the honor of, of shepherding in a way through these transformational arcs in their life. And where I once thought my life was about, you know, riches and accolades and all that the world could give me now it's like and, and what what can i actually offer that's of service here so that's that's my miracle scott it's not like a one one miracle thing but it's really yeah your story is a beautiful story and the transition you have made from that glamour world into what's true beauty you know the real true beauty um and the great beauty of being of service. Um, and actually that's inspired a story I think I'll share a little bit later. Again, I am gonna read uh, comments. Um, I wanna hear from our presenters first, but I am gonna to get to some of the comments coming in. It's easiest to read the ones from those of you in the Zoom meeting, but I'm also gonna check our Facebook pages. And I get to now bring on Brother uh, Astarius. Um, hello, my friend. I love your background, by the way. I love all that. It's a lot going on inside and outside. Welcome. Thank you so much. Um, it is really an honor to be representing the frequency of love and the frequency of miracles. For me, the miracle is the mirror call. It is the calling of the miracle or the because everything that we experience as a miracle is a mirrored reflection of that which lives within the inner sanctum of our being. You know, all miracles that are presented outwardly, you know, is a means for us to objectively engage with something on the screen of our life, which is really generated from the soul projector of our own individual being. You know, the miracle is projected from within the inner sanctum of us. And it's been such an honor to understand that. So I don't have to chase down miracles because my nature is the miracle. And of course, the greatest miracle is the frequency of love. And what has been so magnificent in my journey down the corridors of this thing we call love is recognizing how easy it is to love to love me to love others which are also me by extension and what makes love so easy is the awareness that i don't do love love does me and so in order to come into the full magnitude of the vibration of love, I simply let love love me. I let love have its way with me. You know, a very wise person once said that God has a center that is everywhere and a circumference that is nowhere. And I will add to that, that love has a center that is everywhere a circumference that is nowhere. There is no boundary that can hold down the expansiveness of the vibration of love. Love is always doing 
what love does. I can't not love me. You can't not love you. What can happen is we allow our attention to be hijacked and we pay attention to everything but the frequency of the love. And it appears that we're not loving ourselves. And sometimes it appears that we're even loathing ourselves while at the same time, standing in the circle of eternity is this greater vastness of who we are about the eternal business of loving us and loving the all that is. I let love love me. When I let love love me, I know that every being in the whole of existence is also me loving me. When I let love love me, I recognize that any being loving themselves is a representation of that which is going on inside of me. Because every being on the screen of my life exists first and foremost as cellular counterparts inside of the inner sanctum of me. And so it is such an honor to be in the embrace of love and to know that what it takes to make up my reality and experience with love is not just the exclusiveness of my own personal dance with love, but the all-inclusiveness of the oneness of the wholeness of the dances with love that are, were, and ever will be. Because all of that is also me. And I love you so much. <laughs> Let's just, let's take a minute to digest that, right? <laughs> you know, that was, that was beautiful, just powerful. Thank God Nierka is with us, because I don't know how many people could follow that. <laughs> really? But um, I know that Nierka is one person who actually can. Um, Welcome, Nierka, uh, and I just am so delighted with all three of you to be with us today. It's really pretty amazing. Um, Nierka, what comes to mind for you to share offhand? Uh -oh, well, thank you, Scott. First, it is such a joy, pure joy, such an honor to be here with each and every one of you on Sacred Sunday. And what a joy it is to be with you, beloved Asterius. It has been quite some time since I've seen you, Asterius. And I had the pleasure of meeting many years ago in Eden, our first time here together. And I can share many, many stories of being graced with miracles through the power of divine love. And I'd like to first share a context with this. And as we do, I'm going to go back to gallery view, Scott, because I want to see everyone from my perspective rather than seeing myself although as Asterius says it is a mirror image reflection right what we experience and what we perceive is reflecting back to us our own vibration and often what can happen is someone can be so in the mind especially when we plug in to the things that are happening in the world it can be very polarizing how many of you are seeing that in the world so dropping into the heart, dropping into the heart center, this is the unified field of divine love. And as we bring our hands, even for a moment right now, and feel into the rhythm, feel into the beating of our sacred hearts, feel into the breath of life, we recognize right now that the same life force that is beating your heart, no matter where we are in the world, no matter what our background is, no matter what our beliefs are or any of these distinctions, the same life force that beats my heart right now, beloved, is beating yours. The same life force that is breathing you is breathing me and all of us. So in this sacred space, I'm gonna invite you because I can see we have more people that are here today than I can see you on the cameras. I'm gonna invite you please to turn on your cameras and allow yourself to be seen in this beautiful space of divine love. Because as we turn on our cameras and we allow ourselves to be seen in this sacred space, this is a magic moment here, truly. I'm looking at the number of people in the room and I know that we're asking over a hundred Facebook, look at the number of people. This is an intimate sacred. This is a wonderful come together in an inspired conversation. 
our lives will mirror the qual conversation. So we're coming to the heart of service to share fired conversation and also to give uh, insights, tools, distinctions. I think of our topic today, tools of creating presupposes that there is a co-creation that is unfolding. That it's not just like, okay, where's my miracle? But that there is an attunement, there is an alignment, that there is a there is a awareness that is essential for us to recognize and choose, as Eden was saying, to bring our attention, as Asterius was saying, which is our creative powers, to bring our attention, our intention, our our feelings, our beliefs our highest purpose and our vision into alignment with who we really are. Who we really are. Expressions of divinity, unique expressions of divine love. There is no one on the planet like you, dear one. There's no one like you. No one has your unique expression. No one has the creativity, your unique talents, your way of shining light. So this is really an action. Who's going to experience miracles through grace? Who's, who's available? <laughs> because a lot of times I see people that are calling in a miracle, but there's, there's, you know, there's a lack of availability. And raising your hand right now is sending a message within yourself that I am ready. I am available. I am here. I am present. Yes, there we go. And I can share with you so many stories. And as we continue, I'll be happy to share stories, Scott, if you want me to share any specific stories of times where I have found myself in immense challenges, tuning into the wisdom of the heart, the, the, the love that is within us all. And when we are in this space of unity within our own being, our faith is miraculous in the sense that we know with certainty that something will unfold as we intend it to be or something even greater will show up we have trust we have trust hmm. and yeah yesterday i published a blog so i will share this story just because it's fresh that i Nier published this Nierka, hold on one sec okay so let's Nier let's have conversation i would love to have conversation because no, I, I, I want to hear the story, but your internet actually has, has been funky. Um, oh. It shifted about two minutes ago. Okay, so I don't know if you have the ability it. to get a better signal because we're getting, we want to have the complete Nierka experience. Um, so okay. while you work on that, I'm just going to, I'm going to bring Eden back on for a moment. Um, but we definitely want to hear your stories. And actually... Nirka began to take us in a direction that I wanted to ask all of our presenters, Astarius and Eden. It's easy when we're feeling it, right? And all four of us right now, you know, we're vibing on each other. We're all in that kind of high space. But how do we access that, that place when life has happened in such a way, circumstances have taken place in such a way that we're not feeling it. We're feeling contracted. We're maybe even in guilt or we're in shame or we're in serious lack. Um, so the next round of questions for each of you is how do you, what's a tool that you've used for yourself um, or that you share with others to, you know, lift up when, and I'll, again, I'll start with Eden. So when, when I am contracted and when I am aware, when there's enough witness to, to see, okay, you're in a reaction, you are feeling funky, sad, heavy, something happened that appears out of divine alignment, even though part of me knows everything eventually reveals the gift in it. There's still the very human, very attached part that I now have enough witness to, to notice, oh, I'm in it. And I think that's the first step is to 
to actually kind of attend to yourself instead of reaching for something to avoid, deny, distract, use addictive habits to suppress and deny the feelings. When I am aware that I'm in what we'd call like a trigger or a charged state, I come back to the breath. And I often, maybe you can do this with me, just put your hand right on your heart, your heart chakra and breathe. And when I do that, it brings me back into the now because I'm aware that most of my contraction, most of my suffering is in my mind. It's living in this projection into a future I don't want or some story about what just happened in the past. But in the now, when I breathe and just hold my own precious heart, and sometimes I add a very simple mantra, which is I am here now with each breath. So it's like inhaling, I, exhaling, am here now. Oh, I have feet again. Woo, I have, there's gravity. I'm here now. And when I bring myself back to the now and the breath, I'm actually present to start to see, I think there was an expression that came through Tekanat Han's offering. We are, we've been honoring this incredible master teacher that just passed where he said, recognize the conditions of joy, recognize the conditions of joy that are always permeating. But when I'm not here in my body, I can't recognize how blessed I am, how much beauty surrounds me how much abundance and what's there to be grateful for. So it's about getting back into the body, into the breath and grounding in the moment. And sometimes I'll tell you, I have a dear friend who's a neuroscientist and mindfulness teacher. And she said, do you know emotions actually only last, last between 30 to 90 seconds? An emotional arc of that kind of like chemical release, that charge. It's the mind and the stories that we tell ourselves on loop that reactivate those, what we call negative emotional states or heavy dense states. So if we can bring our mind back to our heart, give our minds to our hearts by coming down and into the breath and the heart, it's like, oh, that feeling's actually dissipated. I'm interrupting that storyline and I'm here now again. So this is my invitation and offering for all of you to start to track and listen to that. <gasps> I'm not breathing. Oh my God, I am contracted. I'm running a story of blame or fear or whatever it is. And just come back, come back. It's almost like I've got you, precious one. You're okay. Self-compassion in that, recognizing. And then there's choice again. Hmm. Thank you. That was beautiful. Um, it's it's lovely to see the similarity too, as as human beings and as coaches. And um, I also use and share a similar affirmation. And the one that I, for myself, have been using for well over twenty years, and have shared it now with probably a thousand clients is I am love, I am loved. And what I find is I am love helps me to remember the big picture. I am loved soothes my ego. And if I'm in that contracted space, <coughs> it's because I'm more in human Scott. I'm more in my animal body and less in the bigger picture. And so I am love, I am loved. What I find really goes on for me is, and I've, I've run this mantra thousands of times, I'm struggling a little bit with the I am loved to remember that part of it, but every time I hear I am loved, it gives me a little more, a little more, a little more, right? So then I begin to remember that I am love, you know, because I need to also know that I'm loved. Um, so that's the, the, the one that I, I use. Um, the other thing just to mention to people is usually if we're in contraction, uh, we're scared. So the other thing is to remember I am safe. 
because the truth is 99.9% .9 of the time we are physically safe. If you're not physically safe, then yeah, let reptile brain take over because you need to run or take care of yourself. But most of the time we actually are safe. We're just tripping and we need to remember that we're safe. So beautiful, Eden, yeah. thank you. Just what you said about remembering you are loved. It's almost like this little inner child is always needing attending. Yeah. No matter the age of our skin suit, there's this precious little being that needs attending to and reminding and soothing. And once that's, it's like the nervous system down regulates the root chakra contraction releases. We're not in fight and flight. We're like, oh, okay, we're here now. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. All right, well, I'm gonna bring Brother Astarius on to hear what he has to share. And hopefully New Yorka is getting her internet resolved because we want to hear from her too. Oh, beautiful. <clears throat> First of all, I want to do my acknowledgements and acknowledging you, Brother Scott, we go back many, many, many years and I'm in deep celebration of your contribution to the expansion of life and, mm -hmm. and also as a brother, you know, because it's the women that are predominantly doing the spiritual work relative to the numbers. Mm -hmm. So when I see a man doing the spiritual work and yielding to you know the guidance of goddess within because she guides because she teaches us to be receptive so i love you brother and i celebrate you for that and eden it's been many 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 years since we met on the ecstatic dance floor <laughs> i won't even try to say what year it was and so it's wonderful to see you again and to bear witness to your involvement and the way that you've been contributed uh, contributing to life. And, and I love you. I appreciate love you and acknowledge you, you know, for the things that you're doing. And it's, it's so wonderful. And, uh, and also Nirika, it's been a lot of years there and we've had some profound moments of, of exchange. So I just wanted to take a moment and just acknowledge everybody. And, um, and then when it comes to the difficulties to move through, first of all, Today is a very special day for me because 49 years ago, on the 23rd of January, I entered onto my spiritual path consciously and with deliberate intention. And prior to that, I had six years, I call it my six years of insanity, growing up in the ghettos of Chicago, leaving mama's house at age 16, all my role models were pimps and hoes and gangsters and thieves and con men, con women and drug salesmen. And I was a part of that treachery for six years. So I had to find my way out of that treachery. And it was on January the 23rd of 1973, you know, that I was able to see my way out of that. Now, one of the things that really helps me a lot when it comes to the shadows that I experience in life is not judging my shadows, not being treacherous with my treachery and not being treacherous with the treachery of others. You know, sometimes we don't realize the way in which we're actually perpetuating treachery by being so judgmental of it. So when I look at pain, and despair. I recognize that pain is an angel in distress. You know, fear is an angel in distress. Worry, an angel in distress. Why? Because if we pierce to the central core of that fear, of that pain, of that anger, we find nothing but pure light. Just like in the, in the eye of the storm, we find pure calm. See, in the, the tornado or the hurricane, you know, and all of that turbulent, violent wind, we go to the center, the eye of the storm, and it's just pristine calm. So the tornado comes down the block and demolishes every house on one side of the street and leaves every house on the other side of the street totally intact. Because the house, the houses that were demolished were passed over by the storm itself. The houses that were left intact were passed over by the eye of the storm, which is where only calm lives. And so when I'm faced with the difficulties of life 
I do what I can do to find my way to the I and the I am of the storm. Because that's the real estate of God Almighty. You know, there is nothing but benevolence and love and joy and peace and brotherhood and sisterhood that live within the central core of anything. And so it's also important for me that I don't judge myself and criticize myself and make myself bad or wrong for when I stumble and fall. Because being impeccable doesn't mean we never make a mistake. Being impeccable means that when we recognize we've made a mistake, we get back on course. We course correct. That's impeccable. See, being a human being is never going to be about never making mistakes. But the key is to have a benevolent and a tender heart and a forgiving heart regarding the mistakes that we individually make or that others make. And then recognizing that all of my heroes and all of my sheroes and all of those who have went before me are a mirrored reflection of my very own self. You know, when I look at them, I look at them from a place of all inclusiveness and connection, not separation. So in order to come into the full magnitude of who we are as a loving being and to transcend the trials and tribulations, we must bear witness to and embrace the reality of our oneness with every exalted being that is, was, or ever will be. We got to link up the telepathic battery cables, our heart mind to their heart mind, initiate the soul jump start. And just like one car jump starts another, when the battery's gone down, we're able to jump start ourselves by virtue of being absolutely in the oneness and the embrace of every exalted something that we ever witness with any being, within any being. Because their exaltation is our exaltation. My exaltation is your exaltation. Your exaltation, my exaltation. And all exaltation is our exaltation. And I love you with the passion of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I feel jump started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mama. <laughs> well, and a story she got, she said, great voice. It's like listening to it, it's like God is talking, you know. You have such a make. And that, you know, just like Eden's outer beauty is such a reflection of her inner beauty, likewise, your voice, the resonance and the wisdom of your voice is from those 43 years of the path that you've been on. And I love that we... 49. 49, you said. Oh, my Lord. Wow. wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 71 turns around the sun as in three days from now. Wow. Well, I'm glad that we get to celebrate kind of your spiritual awakening birthday with you. Really, really beautiful. Um, Susan Woolridge writes, Astarius, I'm also from the S side of Chicago. So you've got a, you've got a sister in the, um, in the room here. I want to read a couple of the comments that have come in, um, starting with one that actually came in on Facebook. And this is uh, from Cindy. And she writes, awakening is releasing everything that is in the way of love. When that is released, we are open to love and love comes through. It's already there for one and all of us. And that's, of course, very similar to something that you had said a little bit earlier, Astorius. Um, I also want to really acknowledge what Eden talked about earlier about the path of service. Um, last night we had the twin ray on with us and they are launching this new path, the, the four divine paths, and one is the path of service. And on the question of what, how do we manage when things are challenging? How do we manage when we're in that contracted, hard space? Finding a way to be of service to others is a wonderful way out of hell, you know? Anytime, and of course, obviously, I don't believe that hell is what, you know, was written by human beings, but hell is, is when we're in that state where we've, we've lost the love, you know, where we're not remembering that we are loved. We're not remembering that we are loved. 
we're in that state of separation. If you make a list, I do this sometimes in my workshops, I have people make a list of their greatest moments in life. And our greatest moments in life always are moments of connection. When we feel really connected to nature, to a beloved, to a family member, to our dog, our cat, to ourself, those are the best moments in life. Conversely, the hardest moments in life are when we're feeling separated, when we're really lost in the illusion of separation. One tool is to remember moments of connection. Remember those moments. How did it feel in your body when you were feeling so well loved by your mother, by your friend, by your lover, by your dog, by your cat? And also being of service. Go out and find someone who is in need because the greatest joy in life is being of service. And I want to say one last thing and then I'll turn back over to Eden and and Astarius, and hopefully Nierka will come back on. I'm here, and I will be. <laughs> oh, okay. I turn, yeah, if you turn your camera on, then I know that you're with us. So that's great. Yes, I've been uh, turning on other devices. <laughs> oh, I, okay, great. Yeah, so I have a few other devices that are being activated. And uh, right now, can you hear me and see me? Yeah, you look great. So let me just finish okay. this story about Marshall, and then I'm going to put the spotlight on you with the question of how you manage when things are really hard. Just a quick one from Marshall Rosenberg, that the greatest joy in life is being of service to others. And the greatest tragedy in life is if we have not learned that, if we have not learned that joy of service. So thank you, Marshall. And I'm gonna put the spotlight back on New Yorka, um, and Hopefully, we'll have the complete New Yorker experience now. Oh, she's still pulling it together. Actually, I was going to put, ooh, that's an echo. OK, let me do that. <laughs> you know, this is such a wonderful uh, you reminder. Know, that this is a wonderful example of life. I mean, sometimes you go forward in life, and you're clear on your intention. And you're taking inspired action and then you get a curveball that is completely unexpected and how you navigate a curveball uh, is one of the keys to living with our creative powers and manifesting and being in attunement with miracles so if you all can see me and hear me right now just give me like a little wave or put your thumbs up because it's fantastic so it's such a joy to be here and i didn't have a chance Chance to be fully present with the last shares of Asterius and with Eden because I was navigating a few technical difficulties. Uh, and yet at the same time, I did hear the question. So I'm so inspired to share with you an insight regarding that, which is recognize that there's a gift within every challenge. What if you knew that even the areas that have challenged you the most, and especially the areas that have challenged you the most, is where the greatest gift and opportunity is for a breakthrough and an expansion and a quantum leap in your evolution. You know why? Because the areas that, and tell me if you all agree with this, the areas that have challenged us most are the areas where there's been the most resistance in the past. Is that true? And the reason why I say in the past, and I like to be purposeful with our language and communication, actually that's one of the tools, is this is a brand new moment. There's eternity in this moment. There's infinite possibility in this moment. And what happens often is when someone's navigating a challenge, they resist what's going on. Like, I don't wanna feel this. I don't wanna have that. Why is this still happening? And whatever we give our attention to is what we give our power to. So if someone is focused on not wanting something to happen, where are they placing their energy and their attention? Precisely on what they don't want. And in, a, in a, an attraction-based universe, as our beloved Wayne Dyer, how many of y'all remember Wayne Dyer? He would say, you can never get enough of what you don't want because your attention is a creative power within itself. So one of the 
insights that I have. And it's interesting because I actually teach this precise thing in a course that I lead called Neogenesis. Neo is new, Genesis is beginning, and it's all about new beginnings. And Asterius, I actually play your spirit rap right before we do a powerful uh, visualization meditation. And I always share with people, go find Asterius and buy his CDs and everything else because it's such a, such a blessing. So I've sent so many of my students over the years to uh, be blessed by these sacred vibrations. Is first question I ask is, are you ready to let it go? That's the first question. If someone's feeling that resistance or feeling like they're in the middle of a you know stuck state or a problem state, or they're they're feeling sadness, anger, fear, overwhelm, anxiety, whatever that may be, the first question I ask is, are you ready to let it go? fully and completely right now within every cell of your being and to be fully aware of it consciously. And it's interesting when we're fully present to that question because some people will be an absolute yes, like yes, ready to go. And others will be like, oh, I'd like to, or oh, I'd be nice. So what it's sharing with me is that the conscious mind has an intention and a desire to let something go, but subconsciously, they're holding on to something deeper. And I actually have this diagram here because I recently led a training on this exact same topic, okay? So the conscious mind's like the tip of the iceberg, but the subconscious mind, which drives so much behavior. Sometimes what happens is a subconscious mind has what we call secondary gain. Secondary gain mean that it's, means that it's holding on to an old pattern, even if it doesn't serve, because at a subconscious mind, it's linking some form of benefit. How many of you can relate to what I mean? Like, I'd like to lose weight, but it makes me feel safe. Or I'd like to go play big, share my gifts with the world, but what if it doesn't work? What if I get hurt? What if I'm not enough? What if, what if? How many of you can relate to this conversation? Does that, does that resonate? Okay, so then the question becomes, what is the, can we get a little advanced? What do y'all, what, what is the highest positive intention of that old behavior? It has a higher positive intention at the highest level. And these are often behaviors that were imprinted in the early stages of childhood before the conscious mind had developed. Sometimes they're passed down through genealogy, literally in the ancestral lineage, there may be vibrations of lack or fear. Here's the beautiful insight and the beautiful, the, the portal of grace into miracles is that there's a gift buried in the challenge. And the moment that you ask the question, what is the gift? What is the gift in this? What is the insight? What is the blessing? What is the gift that once integrated allows this old fear or anxiety or this old pattern to naturally dissolve in light of a new awareness, in light of a new understanding, what is the gift? And as we recognize the gifts and integrate the gifts, the boundaries of those old problems, the old paradigms dissolve as a natural action in light of awareness. Awareness is the portal, the first step to conscious transformation. So then from there, I would suggest observing that experience, literally stepping out of it, rather than being in it, stepping out of it, overlighting it. As you ask this inspirited question, this elevated inquiry. And as we come into the state where we can observe it, that transcendent state. We're not associated to the problem. We could literally dissociate from it because the problem is not who we are. It's like another thing Wayne Dyer that just came to me as he says, you know, if you see a ship in the ocean and then behind the ship, you see the wake, can the wake drive the ship? No, what is the wake? The wake is just the trail that's been left behind. What drives the ship is the present moment energy, which is like right here and right now. So in this space of transcendent observation, from there, we begin to see through the problem into the possibility. From observer consciousness, we tune into visionary consciousness. 
visionary in alignment with our highest self. We begin to ask, who am I in the presence of this challenge? Who am I inspired to be? Who am I committed to become in the presence of this? And, and through this, I always say, before you communicate this way with others, communicate this way. <laughs> <laughs> where you communicate, especially if you're in a state that is less than your authentic self, or if you're experiencing some of these denser frequencies, you know, recognize that you're experiencing a dense frequency. And one of my favorite tools is going into nature, going into nature. I'm going to take off my shoes. I'm going to walk on mother earth. I'm going to feel into her radiant heart and whatever it is that you're feeling, allow that to it's like you're, you're just allow it to flow into nature with love in your heart. This allows the frequencies to begin to, the denser frequencies to begin to dissolve, which allows the light to shine through. The light is always shining. Asterius was saying that in the beginning in his own way, that the light is always shining. But sometimes you look up and you see the clouds and it's the very persistent illusion that there is no light. The light is there and the light is you, beloveds. You are the light. So as we allow these denser frequencies to, rather than pushing them away, invite them in. We're gonna French kiss our fear. Who wants to French kiss their fear? <laughs> okay. And gather insights, learnings, and distinctions. So can you all see me and hear me with that? You're fantastic. Absolutely wow. fantastic. I'm so Thank inspired you. to be here with you. Thank you. Um, I wanna read something that Josiane wrote. Um, and then, uh, and I'm bringing all of you on. And Astarius, I have a favor to ask. If you could send me again your video, because I realized I uh, did the last time you were on, it was when I was in Hawaii and I had my laptop with me. So I don't have your com your video on my computer. If you could email it to me, because um, I definitely want to play it today. Well, you may email it to you like while we're on here. Yeah, 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 because I'd love to play it today. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that out. If you can, if you can figure that out. Um, yeah, I, I, I've been looking for it. I realized it's on my other computer. And um, then I went and you had originally sent it to me on WeTransfer, which only lasts for a month. So it's expired. So if you can easily find it and send it, that would be great. And you want it on email, not text. Email. Definitely email, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, Eden. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm just loving Nirka's passion and just like I feel her Shakti fire. It's so in, invigorating. I love it. She's a powerful, powerful, <laughs> Thank you, Nirka. powerful soul. Namaste, goddess. <laughs> I want to read a couple comments from our, our wonderful audience. Uh, Josie Ann writes, sometimes when we feel in separation within our intimate relationships, we tend to misunderstand a moment of growth as a time of disconnection. So we go into our individual paradigm, we feel disconnected, and we further disconnect from ourselves and others. Compassionate love, the love that centers on the other, teaches us to honor our many selves and many lifetimes mirrored by others and to know that there is nothing in our reality that's truly against us. All is helping us to love the parts of ourselves that we have disowned or rejected without judgment or full integration. So profound, Josiane, thank you so much. Yeah, we, uh, we talk a lot about this hall of mirrors curriculum and whatever we're still judging or projecting out into the mirror is a part of the self we're not holding in love and compassion. And on a deep metaphysical level, often we dream up the exact circumstances and characters to show us, oh, this is still here to integrate and love into wholeness. This reflection is in me. I'm, I'm in this mirror for a reason. So your, your share is just that ultimate self-compassion. Thank you so much. So beautiful. Yeah, I'm going to bring Nierka on too. One of the things that I liked about what she shared too is for us all just to be in conscious when we are feeling contracted, there's this tendency to then do things that further the contraction. 
uh, for those of us that have uh, addictive personalities, and all of us have compulsive addictive behavior towards something. It might be haagen ice cream, or it might be something that has a more harmful impact on us. But to notice when we're in that contraction, am I reaching for the things of comfort that actually create more separation? Am I putting up walls? Am I now beginning to collect evidence that he doesn't really love me, that she doesn't really respect me? And so a term that's good to know is, what are you collecting evidence for in the moment? And when we're in that hard state, human nature is to collect evidence to prove that that person's bad, stupid, or wrong, or that I'm bad, stupid or wrong. The affirmations we were suggesting, the wisdom that Nierka was offering, is collecting evidence to remember the big picture, to remember the truth, the truth of who we are. So what are we collecting evidence for in any given moment? Tools. I, I'm, I'm so honored to be with both of you. I mean, it's like these just two amazing women. Wow. Um, and thank God I got Brother Astarius here to help balance things out. <laughs> What's next? What else would each of you like to offer and to share to our audience today? I'd like to share something about empathy that um, as we as we become more sensitive, I know a lot of uh, I'm, I'm intuiting that a lot of our participants and people beaming in identify as an empath and they might often feel overwhelmed by the energy of another, by the intensity of a situation. And often when we're super sensitive, we're, this, is our, this is our superpower. Our feeling body navigation is our superpower. That being said, there's many people who are empathic that feel they have to protect themselves to not feel overwhelmed and too much intensity in the world in this time or in relational dynamics. And my invitation is that love knows no opposite. And when we raise our vibration and our love level, we are emanating this great I am presence that Astarius was pointing to the center of the storm. So when someone else is charged or even coming at you with projections, with anger, with intensity, instead of merging and feeling that you're being hurt energetically or attacked. This is something I hear often in my clients and initiates where they're perceiving an attack to return all non-love with love, to keep yourself in that eye of the storm in that sense of there is upset and hurt and fear and anger happening over there. And to feel that karuna compassion that Thich Nhat Hanh taught us all so much about, to feel that desire for their suffering to be lessened and alleviated. And then we're not hooked into the drama. We're keeping our own frequency really high and holding this coherent field that ultimately may have the power to pull them into a higher vibration with you in your compassionate presence. So your empathy is not a weakness, it's a superpower. And you can feel what is theirs and what is yours by simply coming back to that is happening over there. I am safe, I am here now in love as love for love. I am, I am here in compassion. And when you can recognize that, there's miracles that happen in that one conversation, in that one exchange. There's incredible openings for miracles from your frequency alone. So I offer, I offer that from my heart. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Scott, I'd love to share something that Eden brought up. That is, I think it's a, it's an interesting distinction. How many of you relate to being an empath? Can you all relate to that? Is there a distinction for you from being an empath and being compassionate? Is there a distinction there? 
Are, are you asking me or no, everybody? Asking okay. Asking everyone. And actually I can see that some new people have joined us. So if you're just joining us right now, we, we, you know, we would all love to see your luminous, shining, radiant faces. So it's another invitation if you're just now joining us to please turn your cameras on. We'd love to see you. So the distinction that I sense with compassion is that you're so present in the heart with someone and that you're not taking on that energy field from a space of compassion. So compassion is like you're, you're purely there. Your heart is open. You see the truth about them beyond the persistent illusion, which is grounded in the kleshas, right? The Sanskrit term kleshas, which is the obstacles to enlightenment, the obstacles to liberation, which is ultimately separation which is a misapprehension. It's a fundamental misapprehension of the nature of reality and the nature of self. Recognizing that we are all in this unified field. You know, I think of a story of when the astronauts were, you know, in the space race to get to the moon. I don't know if you remember that, but it was like, we're gonna win, we're gonna get there first. The Russians, the US, it was like all about competition. and ideological supremacy, but an amazing thing happened when they landed on the moon and they were in this space of expanded awareness and they looked back at this beautiful spinning ball, this glorious little ball spinning through infinite eternal space. It blew the boundaries out of all the competition it blew the boundaries out of the old paradigm in a state of expanded awareness. And they recognized we are one people on this planet. And not just on this planet, we'll save that for another. <laughs> we'll save that for another sacred Sunday, the multidimensionality that is us, the full expansive multidimensionality that is us. So I would invite you to just play with those distinctions. I love distinctions. It's like these little just insights of seeing something just from a new way. Play with the distinction if you've felt in like you've been an empath and you've been giving your energy into that moment and perhaps losing your power. Play with the distinction of compassion. Eden mentioned compassion. That's what inspired me to share this. You know, when I lead my courses and my experiences, I'll often have groups that will reveal the darkest aspects, many of which they've been hiding for years, for decades, for their whole life. They've never shared it with anyone. And all of a sudden they're in this safe container. They could feel now is the time. And one of the prime directives of the subconscious mind is it represses memories with negative emotion until you're ready to deal with it. And once you are, it presents it out of the shadows into the light for resolution. And people will share these experiences and for us to be there in a state of compassion where we're fully present with them and we're also in a transcendent state. It's like multiple perceptual positions simultaneously. We're in a transcendent state, fully present state, fully open heart, full love. And as Eden says, that's not, we're not taking that on, that vibration. And you know what I'd love to do also, because we've got uh, Asterius and Eden and myself and Scott, we have tools to share with you. And we'd love to have this be very real for you as well. If anyone has a specific question of a challenge that you've been navigating or something that you could use support as far as having a breakthrough, we'd love to be open with you personally with your questions. So if you have one, let us know in the chats that you have a question and we could have this be very interactive. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, along those lines, I want to read a couple of comments, not really questions yet, but comments. This is from Ruth, who's watching us on Unify, Facebook on Unify. And she makes a really good point in reference to what we've been talking about. She says, you can be merged and separate at the same time. And when you drive the highway of life, you see signs to be careful while merging. Um, and then she says, my life is massively, incredibly synchronous, meaning we are always in the story. Her path is empathy. Now here's what's really interesting, and I love this point that she makes. We all take on hurt. And if we did not, we would not engage in these discussions. We cannot sing the blues without living the blues. Beautiful point, beautiful point. And, and I think what I, uh, a takeaway from that comment for me is there's nothing wrong with being 
in separation. There's nothing wrong with those perfectly human moments. We are spiritual beings, but we are in animal bodies. And sometimes our animal body takes over. We get ravenous for food. We get exhausted. We need sleep. We get ravenous for connection, for love. So honoring the animal body is a really beautiful, important part of it. So thank you, Ruth, for that. We have not heard from Brother Astarius for a bit. So I'm going to put the spotlight on you, my friend. Okay. Well, uh, just logistically, <clears throat> I did get that video. Hopefully it made it to you, emailed it to you. <clears throat> and so, um, yeah, I had to like put on my technical hat to get that done. Uh, hopefully, it, uh, expectfully, it made it through. Uh, and also, I don't know if, if Nirika, if you're still with us, I don't see you on camera. I uh, am here. Oh, you're still there. So yeah. you, you were gone when I acknowledged you. I just wanted to take a moment to make sure you got my acknowledgement. I, I appreciate all of those years ago when we circled in. I love you so much and thank you for your contribution. And then also, I want to respond to your statement about compassion. You know, I talk to my clients all the time about the distinction between compassion and sacrifice. Now, the empath can operate from the place of either compassion or sacrifice. And probably a great many of us who are empathic operate more so from sacrifice. And sacrifice is win-lose. When you sacrifice, they win, you lose. And so I say to the empath, when someone asks you for something, you know, those who are so emotionally sensitive to other people's stuff, always say to them, whether they're asking you for your time or your money, so, you know, I'm going to meditate on it, I'm going to sleep on it, and I'll get back with you. So you make the, the decision away from them. You put that buffer of time and space between you. Because sometimes when, when one says the snap yes, while in the company of the one that's asking them for something, they are so unknowingly overshadowed by the energy of the other person, confusing that to be their own energy and feeling like they have to comply, you see. And so we as empaths, we want to trade in our sacrifice for compassion. Compassion is always win-win. Compassion will never let you hurt yourself while giving to another. Compassion will teach you how to give equally unto yourself while giving unto all others. And lastly, relative to the empath, and I'm very empathic myself, and I learned this from me, is that one of the greatest powers of the empath is that we can, by deliberate intention, choose what we want to be empathically impressed upon by. I could say, I choose to be empathically impressed upon by bliss. I choose to be empathically impressed upon by the peace that passes understanding. I choose to be empathically impressed upon by the eternal thrust of creation and on and on and on again. When we see those that are exalted in the resonance of what we want, then we empathically choose to receive the baptism of that by virtue of the receivership of our empathic nature so that's that's my response to that and, and then beloveds I, i'd like to take you on just a little short poetic journey a couple of selections from my book miraculous song of ascension just um some energies to help quicken the spirit and, and raise us up and this one also i'm gonna start with i do take me i love myself with all my heart eternal knowing god in part no more hatred, no more pain, legacy of heaven mine to claim. Once I really hated me, a self-induced catastrophe. Others began to hate me too. Hate's reflection became my doom. When I look in any mirror, each reflection is my own. If I dislike that which I am, rejection by others will be shown. In self-acceptance, let me grow to hereby let all others know I want them to accept me too. They only follow what I do. I ask myself to marry me, to thus fulfill my destiny. I promise always to be true. Self-love and honor, I am due. Sweet self, I'm sorry for the pain. Forgive and love me once again. 
I want me for eternity, a better lover than to be. Now every bond is sweeter too for loving me as loving you. Within the temple of heaven's house, I do take me to be my spouse. Relationship created from above, a vessel for the journey of love. Sailing upon the human seas, mirrors of self that set us free. Our human goal above any other to reveal one another to each other. When I relate to you, I learn and I see, and yet my greatest learning is always about me. Relationship must be the key to my self-mastery. The past is gone, the future takes too long time to sing a current song. Only now can take me home, only now can show me how my life, oh heaven, re -endow. Emotional pain from long ago within my heart drips to and fro. How many others will I blame for the horrors of my pain? Resentment pushed me from the tower. Forgiveness is my get up power. Forgive the past, trust the present, make the future sweet and pleasant. It is wise not to despise it. Use the dung to fertilize it. For life's greatest connoisseur gets the best crops from the best manure. I say the heathen spoil the seed and cause my little heart to bleed. Yet if I had not the need, they couldn't do these awful deeds. If in fact I need the lesson, the pain, they cause becomes my blessing the real truth is they work for me so what shall be their salary to ensure that it serves me best i'll pay them the wages of forgiveness relationship the vessel relationship the star vessel relationship is a vessel for the journey of true love no matter who the bond is with the journey leads back home above god is all there really is this the truth will surely tell forgotten oneness with my my God now trapped within an earthly spell. Once upon eternity, there was nothing else but me, an all-pervading godliness with every possibility. Then I split myself in two to be the me as well as you, and then to be the multitude, but oneness never to exclude. I danced the dance of harmony with every living part of me, then roll me all back into one, the one in all was so much fun. Then part of me felt at a loss, unless it be a separate boss, a bitter war I waged with me, lost in hell, no longer free. I forgot that I was whole and ripped apart, my very soul, the life within, cannot be lost, illusion was the only cost. Cease the war, no more attack. Heaven, you must take me back hand in hand with all of me again. I'm ready to be free. Though from my path I once did stray, forgiveness says it's all okay. Now all I be is homeward bound where only wholeness can be found. Love of all the key to me, a bridge to God where I am free. Everything through oneness shown. Infinite love, now take me home. And so, beloved, feel the resonance of who you are as a focalization of all of the love that is, was, or ever will be. All of the benevolence that is, was, or ever will be. And come home to the absoluteness of yourself. And lastly, know that you make a monumental impact upon the expansion of life and that you are a blessing unto create a source that God, Goddess Almighty, is over the moon by virtue of the blessing that you are because you and your individualization of being are a blessing unto create a source that is unduplicatable. God gets something from you that God, Goddess, cannot get from anywhere else or anyone else. <laughs> that was amazing totally amazing thank you beloved brother astarius oh my goodness um, of course i'm going to go back to eden in new york in a moment astarius i still have not received the video although what oh. you just provided was amazing so check i sent you both um in cell phone text and here my proper email address so just maybe check it and try again um but that was incredible i'm going to go to eden in new york in a moment but i want to respond uh actually myself first because we've gotten a couple of questions in the chat room uh one from omashar and one from uh cynthia 
and they're both are kind of similar um, in how to manage when we have a big falling out with someone and we're wanting to connect with them and they are responding just with anger or reaction, etc. And so actually I'd like to address that as a relationship coach and then love to hear if Eden and New York want to address that or any of the other questions that come up in the chat box. So first off, when someone that we love and care about is put up a wall or is in attack mode with us, the first thing we need to do is give ourselves an emergency dose or a series of dosages of self-empathy. We need to remember that we are love and we need to be in a centered space because it's human nature that if someone is attacking us or we perceive we're being attacked, reptile brain is going to take over. And if a reptile brain takes over, we are going to defend ourselves, And so we're going to either fight or flight or freeze or fawn. Those are the four options when reptile brain takes over. And none of those create quality connection. So we have to make sure that we are centered, authentically centered, not just I want to be spiritual, I want to be loving, but really in that centered space before we even try to connect with that person. Make sure you're centered. Fill your cup in whatever way you need. Self-empathy or lots of empathy and support from someone else. Make sure you're centered and focused and clear. Then when you are, as you reach out to that person, make sure your intention is not to defend yourself. Your intention is not to prove them wrong. Your intention is to understand their reality. And that's where, as Marshall Rosenberg would teach us, we have to put on you know, giraffe ears. We have to be able to hear differently. And I, I, I'm going to do a little visual. So even, so once we're centered and we can handle it, the person's like, I hate you, I can't stand you, blah, 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 blah. Remember that underneath this kind of angry coyote, there's actually this little guy that's like, I, I'm hurting, oh, I miss our connection. Oh, I don't know how else to relate to you. There's always a little hurt being inside that angry adult that's coming at you. So if we can see, like Eden had mentioned earlier, if we can see that five-year-old inside the 50-year-old, right? If we can see the little guy inside the big guy, but to do that, we've got to really be in that centered, compassionate, Christ-like, Mary-like, pick your archetype state. So that's my response to those questions. And I'm going to put both Eden and Nierka on to see what they have to say. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I'll, I'll share one quick and then I'll turn it over to you, Eden, because that was so beautiful, Scott. I would follow that with when you ask questions to understand, truly listen, to be very present to listening. And then as Scott said, not defending, of course the miracle says when we defend ourselves, we are attacked. So the energy of defense invokes a polarized energy. So, I would invite to drop in and, and really listen. And one uh, tool that will help you is place your hand upon your heart while you're listening. It's a physiology that as you place your hand on your heart, and if you feel the need to react or respond, inhale a breath. Place your hand on your heart and inhale the breath and inhale a breath. Really tune into the power of the breath because the mind can control the body, but the breath can direct the mind and be a guide to drop into the heart. And they feel that you're coming from this heart space. We're talking about divine love, that you're not defending, you're seeking to understand, you're listening. It will create a profound transformation. I'm gonna turn it over to Eden and I just wanna share one thing. Asterius, that was glorious. And what a gift that was for all of us uh, pure love, 
pure presence, divine expression. And I also have a gift for all of you. I'm not going to share what it is right now, but I'd, Scott will tell me when we can share. I do have a gift for you. To yeah, after, you we will we'll do one last round with everybody offering their gifts, their sharings, etc. Okay, so that so. was such a gift for me, Asterius, and you wave in your wand. <laughs> divine <laughs> supreme gratitude. So, Pretty amazing. Yeah. And I hope you don't mind. We're going to go a little because it's such an yeah. abundance of riches with everybody. So we're going to go yeah. a little bit longer today, probably. I'm, I'm so down for that. I want to let you know, I, I blocked out two whole hours because oh, it's just yeah, too yeah. juicy, too amazing. Yeah. And also from my heart, Astarius, when you were holding that wand and just transmitting with such power and focus, I was like, he's a magi like the magi of old would you imagine the, like, yeah, magi? yeah this is so beautiful the three wise men yeah. condensed into one <laughs> such a, a blessing and i'll never forget our first meeting either and how we went right into that sound vibration connection and just such a blessing for my life to have met you on the path thank you so much so I noticed that um, Omishar was asking about repairing this relationship with his daughter. And I think Cynthia was also asking about repairing a relationship with a sibling. And I had this experience in my own life with my adult daughter where she didn't really want anything to do with me. She needed to get me out of her space for a while. And my human self as scott likes to distinguish between our more like higher self and our animal self my ego mind was trying to figure out how to get back into a feeling of closeness for myself what i needed from her to reflect i'm a good mom aren't i how do i clean this up what can i do and what I actually was shown was through my personal prayer practice and total and utter forgiveness of myself for the past that may have imprinted her in a way where she needed to really take space. I forgave myself and then I held her as innocent, absolutely innocent. And I put myself in her shoes completely of all the transitions as a single mom she had to make with me over and over in this challenging phase of her childhood and development. And I had so much compassion for her and my own kind of victimy thinking about, but I wasn't a bad mom. Please reflect back that I'm okay. It just dissolved. I dissolve my need of reflection of being anything special or enough. And I filled my own cup with self-forgiveness and compassion, saw her as innocent, felt such compassion towards her. And then the miracle happened. And she not only came back into my life fully, the quality of our relationship is so different and I can really hold space and listen in a way I never did before with her because I'm not in the way. It's not about me as much or the little me now. It's really like, how can I serve her life journey as this compassionate witness and presence of unconditional love? And it's changed the relationship into this beautiful, close relationship. And we don't know how long these things might take. It is possible. So my, my invitation for you, Omishar and Cynthia, is to do the inside job to transmute any victim consciousness to get into that higher level of forgiveness and compassion and see them as just divine innocent beings and continue that that view of them in your inner space and watch how the universe might just offer you a miracle and i would like to chime in in response to that question if i may mm -hmm. Beautiful, so, Eden. So when a, when a beloved is coming from a place that we don't particularly resonate with, or there is an indifference between ourselves and them, what I have learned is that it's very powerful to see them from a place of all inclusiveness rather than a place of exclusiveness. So if I go into the exclusiveness 
of this so-called dark shadow place that they're coming from, now I'm defining them according to that exclusive misbehavior or whatever I might want to call it. But if I look all inclusively and I look at their in the course of eternity, there is a resonance of their being that comes from shining benevolence. In the course of eternity, there is a dance that I'm having with them that the heavens are over the moon about. See, and so it's like not just being in the painful acknowledgement of the indifference of the moment, but looking larger. The other thing is letting go of the expectation of desperation, where I desperately need them to hurry up and be different so that I can be comfortable. Rather than the expectation of desperation, I'm going to morph into the expectation of inspiration with the understanding that in due season, all clarities will reveal themselves in due season, in the course of eternity. And also when I'm looking larger, when I'm not zeroed in on the shadow stuff that I feel pain about, but rather I'm looking at a higher something, even if they can't exemplify that something, I'm going to see that reality for them. And when I'm looking larger, I'm feeling better because my attention is not upon the lower frequency of that painful stuff. And also that which I affirm for the drop, I affirm for the ocean. If I'm affirming this individual beloved's negativity, I am by extension affirming the negativity or the would-be negativity of the universe. What I think about the drop, I think about the ocean. And so it's being aware that there's a larger something at play. And even when we share the truth or share our truth and we feel they don't get it because we all want to be heard and we all want to be understood. But again, moving from exclusiveness to all inclusiveness, because every time we dance with a beloved, we're having a rendezvous with God in the whole universe. Now, this individual may not be ready for what it is that we're sharing. And yet there may be 10,000 others in the universe that's ripe and ready for the same message because the communication and the dance I'm having with them is not exclusive. It's all inclusive. I am having communion with the whole of the universe through an individual being. By virtue of being in that awareness. Now, again, I'm looking larger, so I'm feeling better. And I'm also looking at um, the fact that even if they're not ready for what I'm sharing, it's going to become a deposit within their soul bank, accumulating interest until such time that they're ready to withdraw it. Because some of the truths we share are time released. They don't always activate right away. <laughs> Sometimes they activate down the road. And so we let go of longing. We're more from longing to belonging. I don't have to long to be heard. Because I belong to being heard, and being heard belongs to me. <laughs> beautiful. Just beautiful. I'm, I'm so touched with all the wisdom coming from all four of, or the, all three of our guests. Um, I'll, add my, I'll add myself in there too, I guess. Um, also, there's some really wonderful wisdom coming from our people in our chat box. Uh, uh, a lot of people on Unify that are sharing really wonderful wisdom. I'll read the most recent, Jeffrey, who's one of our regulars, writes, the universe is proceeding with perfect timing. If you believe it is not, it is not an error in the universe, but an error in perception. Levolution is the solution. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to just briefly address, um, uh, I think it was... Uh, go back a moment it was Cynthia it's yeah but what happens if someone's being violent so we do have to set boundaries and it's important to differentiate between a boundary and a wall a boundary is healthy in all relationships even if I'm having a fantastic relationship with Astarius or Eden it's still helpful for us to set boundaries it might be hey I've only got a half hour for this phone call Hey, I'm not available for dinner until next week. Um, so setting boundaries in all relationships is beautiful. It's healthy. 
when we have a clear boundary, we know what the playing field is. And that's a quality of healthy relationship, is we can set boundaries and understand each other's boundaries and ask questions about the boundaries versus a wall where there's, we've, we're no longer in connection. We're no longer, because there's just a big wall up. Um, there are times that we even need to set a wall if indeed we're with somebody who is violent or dangerous. Um, and that those are tragic situations, but they also occur on, on occasion. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge that boundaries and walls are part of our world, they are part of relationship, but like anything, let's be conscious about, are we creating a boundary? Can I do that in a compassionate way? Am I putting up a wall and do I really need to put up a wall? So I wanted to add that to Cynthia. All right, we're gonna do one more round of offerings and I'm gonna start with Nyurka because Nyurka has a really, really cool offering that uh, she's providing. So I'm gonna pull it up in a moment, but tell us a little bit about what you've got going on next week. Yes, this is, uh, thank you so much, Scott. I've got an invitation for everyone. I'm actually hosting this week, so the timing is divine. This week on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, I'm hosting a three-day manifest your vision challenge, and it's absolutely free to join. So we're going to be together for an hour of power every day where I'm going to be sharing with you insights, uh, distinctions, strategies, tools to tune into the height of your vision and how do you bring it out of the realm of idea into manifestation, actualization, reality. So we're going to be exploring how essential coherence is. You know, a lot of times people, it's January, so people start thinking about what do I want to achieve this year? And I mean, New Year's resolutions is kind of like a cliche. A lot of people, you know, focusing on their goals and I find a lot of times people go at this backwards asking questions like what do I want to achieve or what is it that I want and what is most essential is tuning in to the heights of who we are who we're inspired and committed to be and become in a realm of infinite possibility and from this space tuning into a vision and our in our highest purpose and from this space of attunement then we begin to activate our powers of manifestation and alignment with universal law. And then how do we bring that into specific goals that are an extension and expression of, of our essence? So look, it's happening right there, three days. The website, Looks put it on the chats, is nyurkainc.com forward slash manifest. So that's n-i-u-r-k-a-i-n-c.com forward slash manifest. And all you've got to do is say yes and show up and play full out. And I guarantee you, you'll receive profound insights to transcend anything that's blocked your manifestation and to step into the heights of who I know that you're destined for and how to bring that into your creations in all the areas of life that are important to you in your business and your health and vitality in your relationships financially in all aspects of your life. So it's my gift to you. It's happening this week. You can invite as many friends and family as you want. Invite your team, invite everybody in your life. We're going to have a big conscious party and it's going to set the stage for creating and co-creating an epic year for us all. Beautiful. I, I'm sticking the um, it into the chat box. I'm also going to share it out on as many of the Facebook pages as I can. And again, that starts on Wednesday at 11 o'clock Pacific yeah. time, 12 mm -hmm. noon mountain, uh, two o'clock Eastern. And so Nierka, that's really generous of you. And I, I'm going to try and participate. I, I want to, I want to learn from you. Love that. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm going to bring on your compadres for a moment. Uh, here is our co-host Eden. And here of course is Astarius. Um, anything either of you wish to share with Nierka before we kind of go into your final thought for the day? I'm just really excited to have met you. I look forward to getting to know you better and your your power and focus and inner fire is inspiring. I can feel that place where as 
as women, this kind of open throat chakra and the transmission with Shakti is just flowing. And it's such a great mirror. It's such a wonderful thing to, to be in your presence. Thank you for your passion. I, I feel like a soul sister. So meeting a soul sister and how wonderful it is for us all to come together in this space. Yes. Beautiful. And Nirika, I would love to offer to you another facet, actually the, uh, the creator of manifestation. You know, we all have this resonance with manifestation and it's so important, but before we can manifest, we have to femifest. So femifestation is actually the creator of manifestation. You know, the great femifestation is eternal, a never ending formless stream of life. If manifestation is our only thrill, we're then in the grips of fear and strife, for forms will come and forms will go. This is a truth that we all know. All things of time and space at some point will be erased. So the power of the great femifestation is it, it is the womb of creation, you know, out of which all possibilities are born. You know, the great femifestation represents eternal possibilities, those that will actually come into manifestation and those that will just stay in the realm of potential. But all of those exist within the great femifestation, which is like in the creation story, it says, so God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Well, the without form and void is the great femifestation. And every reality, you know, because we are pregnant with every reality that will ever come to be, they are embryos within our soul, even though our human eyes have yet to see. So we see with the eye of mind and heart into infinite realms of the great unseen, choosing wonderful feelings without concrete reasons and all the riches of the kingdom are now ours to redeem the great manifestation, the womb of creation, primordial cause of all manifestation. And my last offering, I want to share a poem that I wrote for the year of 2022. I call this 2022 Happy New Eternal Now. Enter portal 2022, frequency of the deeper you. Waking up the sleeping me, access code to what is true. Crescendolini, inner genie, wake up now my kundalini. Traveling on ascension waves, future power of ancient days, 31st of midnight hour, opening up my inner power, and from fear I transcend. Two years merge and converge, calling forth the freedom urge to enter into something new and merge with all that I once knew. Happy New Year is twofold, marriage of the new and old. Happy New Year, N-E-W. Happy New Year, K-N-E-W. For us, there is nothing new except that which we always knew. Kundalini, crescendolini, dream awake my inner genie. Great crescendo through the window, happy new I am. Kundalini, crescendolini, dream awake your inner genie. Great crescendo through the window, happy new you are. And so I just want to put it out there that we come to recognize the synergy between the new N-E-W, which is of time, and the new K-N-E-W, which is of eternity. Because for us, there is nothing new except that which we always knew. So we are in the resonance of the happy new new, happy new new, you know, the new and the new. And it's a, such a beautiful thing to remember that because it's all already, you know, inside. And beloveds, all of you who are out there and all of you who get the replay, thank you so much for remembering who you are, coming home to yourself loving yourself no matter what and following the example of creator source god god is absolute loves us all with an infinite love and validates us with an infinite validation by virtue of one fact and that is that we are there is nothing that we could do achieve or create that would cause the love of god to be one i order different for us so let it be that we begin to love ourselves in that way i am therefore i love me 
I am therefore at peace. And I love you because loving you is loving me by extension. Oh, I say amen, namaste. And you put your arms around yourself, pinch yourself on all four cheeks, top and bottom, sweet cheekaboo for you. You probably played peekaboo, but cheekaboo is a whole nother fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I want to let people know how you can get more Astarius. Um, and first of all, let's go to his website. His website is his name. It's simple. A-S-T-A-R-I-U-S dot com. Astarius dot com. And there's a lot of wonderful things happening there. The video that I had wanted to show is on his website. Um, Astarius, I got an email from you, but there's nothing attached to it. So um, uh, if you get that. Well, that's me, Mercury retrograde. <laughs> I know it's, it's it's technology. So you can find it, though, people, by going to his website. That's where it lives. Um, and his website and YouTube also it opens up on my YouTube channel. Beautiful, and that that leads to people are asking, how do I watch the replay? So um, I want to encourage everybody join the Global Peace Tribe. Go to globalpeacetribe.com and register. That way you get our email. Ad we get your email address. You'll get a copy of all the replays tomorrow. Uh, the replay for Friday night, which was amazing. Saturday night, which was incredible. And of course, today's show, which has been equally amazing. Um, and uh, you'll also get announcements about our upcoming shows. So that's the best thing to do. Also, you can always go to our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, put in Global Peace Tribe, and there's a lot there. All of our Saturday Night Alive shows, Awakening World shows, all of the Sacred Sundays. I had a great Sacred Sunday with Astarius on um, right around Christmas time. So there's a lot there. Um, Scott, all right. Can we encourage everyone to connect also and keep the conversation going on Instagram and on Facebook and keep this conversation going and share, you know, share with your communities, share with your friends. You received value from this session. There's others out there that can be blessed as well. Please share, share it with them. Thank you for that. Absolutely. And I'll, I'll put it in the chat box. Um, one of the ways you can catch it on, on Facebook. And by tonight, I will post on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, the link to this. And then again, all of you that are members of Global Peace Tribe, you'll get the replay tomorrow. Um, I am going to show the Marianne Williamson videos last because uh, I didn't want to keep our guests longer. We're already past the 1130 time. But before we move on to Marianne, I do want to remind everybody about the offerings from Eden Amadora. Um, and her website is also her name, EdenAmadora.com. There's a lot going on here. And in a moment, I'll have her talk about uh, she's now receiving applications for her priestess training. Um, one of our women who we met this weekend, I know, sent in an application to you, Eden, Josiane. She's hoping that she's she'll be here. Ready. Our wonderful, beautiful, compassionate, wise Josiane. I'm so excited that you're going to be a part of this journey. So a great way to get started to go deeper is to take this quiz, the Discover Your Beloved Archetype quiz. Um, Astarius and Nyurka, I encourage you to take it too. I took it. It was really fun. Um, and so you just go to her website, you take the quiz, and then you get back an automated email that kind of explains your particular uh, type of person. And even can I share a little bit more about it? Yes, please. Yeah. Do. So the reason I, I did this quiz is because I'm working in the realms of divine feminine archetypes for over 13 years with women where I've seen these incredible transformations, transmutations of old stories, the lead of our repetitive little patterns and shadow wound things just opening up into our gifts and this this beauty of remembering who we really are over and over. And these divine feminine archetypes have been kind of robbed from us in the West. In our, in our world, we don't have 
a lot of examples of divine feminine, apart from maybe Mother Mary, were, were robbed of all these beautiful faces of the goddess as a way of modeling and embodying their qualities. So for men and women, the divine feminine lives within us as uh, Astarius so amplified this femifestation, this divine mother is here as the emanation of primordial vibration. And we're starting to amplify her light and her compassion and her unconditional embrace. And when you take this quiz, you're going to have answers that might surprise you around what your gifts and passionate proclivities are naturally, how you love, how divine love works through that fractal, that snowflake you are. And you'll also be shown, oh, these are some of the potential wound patterns that come up in relationship because it is through relationship, sacred relationship that we grow and that we evolve. So the beloved archetype quiz is just a tool for you. There's so much value on the other side of it. There's poetry, there's songs, there's even the opportunity to come a little bit deeper and learn more about your gifts and transmute your shadows. So that's from my heart to yours as a, a free offering that you will learn a little bit more about these divine feminine archetypes. And then Scott mentioned that I am setting sail on a 13 moon mystery school priestess training again. I've been doing this work for 13 years and I'm so blessed to have one of my initiates here with us today. And, you know, we, we heard from her, Scott was on a part of a call, was on a call that we did on Thursday called enter into the temple. And Alexis shared with us her, um, her story and I just, I just want to invite you, Alexis, into this group, even though we're at our 11th hour here, because I felt like the miracle of divine love, which is what the show is about, really has touched your life through this divine feminine, unconditional embrace. And I've seen such a radical transformation in your perception and your view of yourself and life. And I don't know if there's anything in brief you could quintessentialize and share that comes sure. from your heart. And you don't need to be brief, Alexis. I oh. honestly, I was so touched by your story. And I asked Eden, I said, is there any chance Alexis could come on this weekend? So um, people are staying with us. We're not losing audience. And your story is beautiful. So you don't need well, to. Thank you brief. for inviting me. I mean, what a gift to even just be here to witness all of this and to find you really. This is wonderful. Um, I would love to share. And I can really relate to what the questions that came up, especially around family and feeling so um, spun in this apparent othering and all of this conflict in the family and all of this, like I've had a lot of that in my life and even in my love relationships and that sort of thing. When I came into this circle, honestly, I was in a very dark place. I had just had a major rift in my family and a breakup and I was in this place of really feeling like I wasn't even sure where my value was I had always been valuing myself in this way of like achieving or being the best at things and competing and all of these ways like that and I felt like I was losing and that I wasn't the best and that I wasn't even sure if I belong to be in a body on this planet anymore really so I came into the circle feeling like I was just looking for um some support and also feeling sort of disconnected from like femininity I knew I was lead I was looking to be different than like the way that it was at work, all of these people were leaders in this way that I didn't really feel that was a good example for me. I didn't want to be like that, but I didn't know what it looked like to really be something else. So I joined this circle and I found such an amazing opportunity for witnessing transformation. I mean, it was like I was held and am continue to be held. I've been through this circle now. This will be my fourth and fifth time. And there's just such a circle of unconditional love where I am met there as I am and accepted for who I am, no matter what 
my parents might say about me or my boss might say about me or and anyone else doesn't matter i know that i've really been able to find this love for myself within myself and know that i have all these sisters at my back that really have their hands at my back all the time so that's been amazing for me and it's also just really helped me to come into my power in my femininity and see and feel safe to be who I really am. So I'm so grateful for that. And I really value this opportunity to share it with all of you. So thanks for hearing me. So when Alexis first came into the circle, she, I'm just going to say it like it is. She was actually suicidal. She was on the, the verge of like not wanting to be in a body, as she said. And now she's not only in healthier, positive relationships and feeling a sense of purpose, she's starting to lead and hold other women and serve and shine that feminine leadership forth in the world. So it's just such a beautiful miracle and transformation to have witnessed you over this arc of, do you feel like it's coming on to about five years? I, I'm not linear. It's hard to know how long we've been doing this together, but it's just such an honor, such a beautiful gift to have you in this circle with me again. So thank you. And yeah, I wanted to let those beings who are tuning in know that this is available. And because of the pandemic, it's almost like adversity bred opportunity. I had always done these circles in person. And then they were limited to who was local, who could come every month. And because of the pandemic, I had many beings say, please do it online, do it on Zoom so we can keep going. And at first I was like, can we feel the frequency as strongly and the, the medicine of each other's shares? And you do, and you feel the coherency and you feel the love and the archetypal practices and rituals come alive, even through Zoom. It's amazing. So for those of you who are curious, please visit my website. You can find under my offerings or work with me, the Mysterium. And this is a 13 month long because there are 13 moons in the year, 13 month long, beautiful journey into love, into the heart of love, deeper into the heart of love. I've um, put into the chat box for Unify Love Coach Academy and here on Zoom, the link uh, to where you can see all about Mysterium and you can apply to be a part of it. And so I do really strongly encourage, she's building a, a powerful community. And as I've gotten to work with Eden, she's the real deal. She is absolutely the real deal. And so, um, and thank you, Alexis, for coming on board and, and being with us today. I, I so appreciate that and sharing your story and congratulations on your evolution, on your transformation and, um, you know, we all are taking hands and growing together. That's what it's all about. And uh, each and every one of you who hears my voice, and I want to acknowledge all the people that are going to watch the replay. You know, the majority of the people that are going to watch this show actually watch the recording, watch the replay. So um, everybody is welcome. Everybody has a role to play. We all are imaginal cells finding each other to create the butterfly out of the dying caterpillar. And um, I totally see that. I'm going to bring Astorius on. And Astorius, Eden, Alexis, you're welcome to stay. I'm going to show a couple of videos of Marianne Williamson that we were supposed to show last night. Um, but if you need to go, uh, this is a chance to say yeah. goodbye. I'm going to need to bow out. I'm actually moving my home today and tomorrow. So this is a little window and it was such an honor to be with you this weekend, Scott. I am so moved by all our participants and guests and their hearts and the sharing. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Blessings and love, only love. Beautiful to be with you, Astarius, again, brother, and meet you near Nyorka. Bye, Scott. Bye, Alexis. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 All right. Um, all right. Well, thank you, everybody, for uh, being with us. And one last thing, and then I'll get to Marianne. Um, I want to remind people of next weekend, you know, every weekend now with the Awakening World, we take a topic and we explore that topic. 
Um, and next weekend, it's all about kind of our extraterrestrial galactic family connections. Um, and it's a making contact update. We have amazing presenters. We have Elizabeth April. If you don't know Elizabeth, she is, she's incredible. Um, Deborah Giusti, who hosted, who co-hosted Saturday Night Live with me, is coming back on for the night, on Saturday night. Celestine Starr will be with us. Um, the Hertogs, J.J. and Desiree Hertog, Whitley Strieber, who literally wrote the book Communion, um, is going to be with us live. The woman down to the left, um, Marina Seren, she is incredible. She's this 21-year-old hybrid, and she is to be seen, to be believed. She's really amazing. And I'll be collaborating with my um, uh, good friend, Alan Steinfeld. We'll be collaborating and doing this together. So... Um, it's going to be a great weekend. All right. Um, I am going to play a couple of videos. Obviously, Marianne. God, may I say one thing before we complete here? Absolutely. Let me put this. You mentioned, you mentioned my website. I appreciate that. And I just want to very quickly say, you know, that, uh, what I feature there is I'm an intuitive astrologer. I do sound healing transmissions with didgeridoo and vocal harmonics. I have uh, uh, 24 music albums and a couple of books there. So definitely go to astarius.com and surf through there and find your own personal treasures. I love you all so much and, uh, uh, you know, keep growing, you know, good fortune in all that you are and all that you do. And I love you, Scott. I love you, Nirika. And I love you, Eden Amadora. <laughs> Thank you, Astarius. I look forward to our next connection. Definitely look forward to that. I'm going to put together a Bay Area retreat, by the way, so we'll have to have Astarius at that one for sure. And again, people are wondering how to connect. Go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com. And if you haven't registered already, register so you get all of our offerings. <sighs> all right. So, of course, Marianne Williamson, for most of you, uh, you know that she has been teaching from A Course in Miracles for decades. Uh, I attended a course she was teaching in a living room in Beverly Hills about 35 years ago. Um, she goes back that far, and I've known Marianne that long. She's been on several of my shows several times. And um, so I'm going to go to a, a few videos of Marianne. I just interviewed her recently. fallen into a nightmare. A lot of us think, well, if only we could awaken. But the Course in Miracles says you can't go from the nightmare to awakening. You have to go from the bad dream to the happy dream. The happy dream is the awakening world. We're in the process of awakening. The bad dream becomes a happy dream. A planet that is infused with so many warlike situations, people killing each other, atrocities, becomes a world in which war is merely a memory. A planet in which there is so much unnecessary suffering becomes a world in which there is no unnecessary suffering. A world in which 12,000 children die every day of starvation becomes a world in which all are fed, in which all have enough because we have used so wisely and compassionately the resources of this planet. A world in which laughter and love and song and forgiveness and dancing and merriment is the dominant human experience. Once we get there, once we're a happy dream, then we will awaken and we'll be beyond form altogether. Thank you so much, Marianne, for your incredible contribution to Thank help you. us truly become an awakening world. Thank you. It's wonderful working with you. Ah, beautiful. Um, the, I'm going to show two more short videos from Marianne. This next one is from actually uh, a previous interview a while back, but I think you'll find it quite pertinent. Let's take a look. And so I'm going to ask that you join with me and remember that America has two 
You know, one of the things that Biden said in his talk tonight was he referred to what Lincoln said about the better angels of our nature. You know, if it was 200 years ago and you talked about, you know, there was no modern psychology, Freud hadn't been born yet. And if you talked hundreds of years ago to someone about inclusion and kindness and tolerance and compassion and mercy and forgiveness, they would say, oh, you mean angels. And if you talked about meanness and judgmentalness and unkindness and cruelty, they would say, oh, you mean demons. And then we thought we were so smart, we left concepts like that behind, but what are those facets of our character except the angels and the demons within us? Tonight, let's dedicate ourselves to the angels of our better nature. Tonight is not a night to say, well, I'm Democrat or I'm Republican or I'm Green or I'm Libertarian or I don't believe in the political system. Tonight is the night to remember we're Americans and we're never going to agree about everything and we don't have to. In what relationship? In a marriage, in a, in a love affair, are you going to agree about everything? Intimacy is about knowing how to navigate the fact that you're not always going to agree, not about the fact that you do always agree. So I just want to uh, complete with a prayer for forgiveness for our country. I think all of us need it tonight. Dear God, we place our country in your hands. And we ask that a great wave of forgiveness wash us clean. May all the walls that would divide us, our judgments about each other, dear God, we move them tonight. We pray for Donald Trump and we pray for Joe Biden. We pray for them both. And we pray for all Americans. And we pray for our country, dear God, that has been so divided. May there be a miraculous healing now. Repair us, dear God. Make all our crooked places straight, heal our wounds. Restore our decency and our love for each other. Tonight, break the chain. May we remember tonight that oneness which is your presence within us In this, we are united. We drop our judgment, we drop our blame, we drop our hatred. And in this moment of love, may miracles be called for. And so it is, <laughs> we all say, There's an interesting story about when that episode of Seven Night Live took place. Uh, we plan our shows pretty far out, anywhere from three to eight weeks out. And we knew that we were going to do something about the election. Uh, and at the time, we had no idea how the election was going to turn out. And of course, Marianne Williamson ran for president. And... Uh, Probably most of us were very proud of her and maybe voted for her or supported her. But something you may not know, she took a real beating. Uh, she took a public beating. Um, a lot of the journalists called her a kook because, of course, she was talking wisdom at a higher level. And they tried to paint her as just a spiritual kook, which was really really, really painful for many of us to watch and very painful, obviously, for Marianne. Also, to be honest, she came out of it $500,000 in debt because she used so much of her own money to move things forward. And so as we were, plan as we were preparing and planning the show, uh, we said, you know, we're going to have to do something on election recovery. No matter what happens in the election, no matter who wins, there's going to be, the, the country was already so divided. So we're going to need to do a show about unification. Let's see if we can get Marianne. And, and Marianne agreed to be on the show. And we booked her several weeks in advance. Well, as fate turns out, you may not remember, but um, because there was so much 
upset about votes and all that sort of thing. Um, Biden didn't fully accept, he didn't give his big acceptance speech until that Saturday, the election took place on Tuesday night, but he and Kamala Harris waited until Saturday to actually have the kind of big acceptance speech. And as fate would have it, they happened to give their speech at five o'clock Pacific time, and we went on at six o'clock. So we were immediately after we had seen Biden and Kamala Harris accept. And for Marianne, uh, she and I afterwards, after Saturday Night Live, and she said, thank you, Scott. It was amazing timing because she was alone in her apartment watching Biden and Kamala Harris, two people she had shared a stage with, that she had traveled with, that she had had meals with, achieving this incredible accomplishment of being elected president and vice president. And there she was kind of alone in her apartment with a big debt. And she said, it was really, for me, amazing to be able to be with some of my tribe, some of the people that get me and get who I am. So it was kind of a, a beautiful exchange in that way. And if you ever go back and watch, she and I actually had a really lovely exchange on Saturday Night Live talking about politics and such. So anyway, I think, I think I'm going to conclude with that. Um, uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, I love the, the tribe that we have. And as New Yorker said, please share this out. Um, please share with your friends and your fans and your family um, all about the shows that we do, uh, because we do want to reach more people. Uh, I'm going to pop in the Zoom room chat box. Um, this is where we are on Unify on Facebook. Um, and share that out with people. Um, go to our YouTube channel. Pick your favorite Saturday night or Friday night edition to the Awakening World or just our new promo video. Uh, we've got that great promo video that I'm really proud of. Um, we also have a wonderful new video with Johanna Beekman singing and all of our different presenters on it. So share the word. Um, and I see Josiane is still with us. And Josiane, I actually uh, am going to send you an invitation. I figured out which show I want to put you on. So uh, that's coming. Thank you, everybody, for watching. God's blessings. And yes, Marianne has been a great role model for us, Nancy. Um, and uh, Omashar, is Omashar still there? If, if people want an Omashar song and he's still here, I, I, he turned his video off, so he may not be with us anymore. Um, so Omashar, if you can hear me and you want to play a song, turn on your video. Oh, there he is. All right, buddy, you want to close us with a, with a song? You are muted. You're muted, pal. I think he's doing something technical. Need you to unmute. How oh, perfect. Um, so um, that was very cool. My mum called just from England, just as we were uh, oh talking about family and relationships. And so um, it's kind of like being torn between two lovers. Oh. And uh, <laughs> not torn, um, embraced by two lovers. Well, I hope I hope that your mother understands, and I she apologize. she does. And what a beautiful weekend we've had with us all, Scott. How absolutely lovely. Well, people and, were actually asking for you, so this that's a good sign. That's well, this is a, this is I'm going to play this song, and it's um, from I think it's from my Flower of Life album, and it's called "The Time Has Come." And um, let me just put into the chat box the chorus, which you're all going to sing because it's compulsory. Okay. And um, there it is. And here it comes. But as you sing, everybody, <clears throat> do what I'm about to do. Mute yourselves. Um, so sing along, but make sure you're muted. And along those lines, I'm going to turn it over to you, Omashar. Okay. okay. You can hear that? Can hear that? Echoing. Echoing. Perfect. the volume. I am one with all, one with all feeling, and one with all, one with all love, one with all, one with all healing, one with all. Okay. I am 
one with all, one with all feeling, and one with all, one with all love, one with all, one with all healing. I felt alone for oh so many years Held my head high to hide the pain Nowhere to turn so to myself again I tune my heart to the mother I am one with all One with all feeling And one with all One with all love One with all One with all healing And one with all I am one with all one with all feeling and one with all one with all love one with all one with all healing and one with all the time has come to wake my sleepy head and peel back the sheet of illusion The time has come to lift my voice once more and sing the songs of the new world I am one with all one with all feeling and one with all one with all love, one with all, one with all healing, one with all. I am one with all, one with all feeling, and one with all, one with all love, one with all, one with all healing. Thank you, Omashar. I'm going to gallery view so you can see everybody that's got the cameras on. You're so welcome. That was well, fun. Twinkle, Omashar. The time has come. <laughs> and here we are. And I'm so grateful to be with each and every one of you. You all are so beautiful. I love doing this as Zoom meetings so I can see some of you in your beautiful faces. Thank you, Omashar. There's a beautiful way to close You're this You're very out. welcome. Have a wonderful Sacred Sunday. Have a wonderful week, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you all next weekend. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>